Welcome to the Women Leaders Association Daily Member Podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland. And in each Daily Member Podcast, we will pick out a great speaker from one of our meetings that we thought you would enjoy. You can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind Group or find a networking group near you, or if you just need access to the membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. So I'm Danielle Crutchfield Cummings. Uh, I am from Little Rock and uh, born and raised, uh, and I work for the Little Rock School District. I've been an educator for 24 years. Uh, I am currently the Director of Assessment and Accountability uh, for the Little Rock School District. Um, I have assumed several roles as an educator uh, over the course of these years, uh, and you can see some of those on the screen. Uh, I'm very active in my community. Uh, I am uh, a member of a local sorority here, well, over in a sorority, um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, uh, here and we do a lot of community service work uh, in in the city uh, in the state and uh, I have a, a, a small business uh, that's called uh, the strengthening group where I do work with people on uh, coach I coach people I have speaking engagements and things like that I am the proud mother of um, three sons and um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good. I have some people on the call who are part of the organization. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, that's probably enough about me. Um, so <laughs> we can go ahead and get started. Uh, it is uh, absolutely a pleasure to be here uh, with you today uh, to speak. Um, so I thank you for the opportunity. And I'm going to talk about leadership qualities that I picked up over the years. So uh, hopefully, hopefully they'll resonate um, with you. I would like to start uh, just by uh, just by stating that these are life lessons that I've picked up. And so first and foremost, I do believe that uh, life experiences shape um, shape us. I believe that um, what we do with those experiences. Uh, shapes our leadership. I believe that to be true with me. Uh, and so I'll uh, ask a question of, of you. Um, have you heard of the phrase, no pain, no gain? Uh, this phrase is typically used when we are uh, working hard or doing something that might be difficult on the front end so that we can get the desired change or gain or outcome on the back end. And so typically, I agree with no pain, no gain. Um, but what if um, the pain, uh, what if we didn't create the pain? Or what if uh, we didn't ask for the pain? So if I'm not, if I don't um, choose to do something difficult in order to get uh, the desired outcome, but something is done to me and I didn't ask for that, or I didn't create uh, the pain, then I would typically not think that there's a possibility of a gain on the other side. If I didn't create that uh, a pain, uh, there is no gain in my opinion. Um, so I thought about that phrase, no pain, no gain, and I still today agree with that. However, I had to layer on uh, Romans 8, 28 from the Bible with no pain, no gain. So Romans 8, 28 says, um, everything works together for my good. Everything, everything works together for my good or for our good. And when I look over the situations in my and circumstances in my life, um, the good and the bad, I realized that all of them shaped and sharpened who I am as a woman and sharpened my leadership. And it all has brought me to this very moment. So those things that I worked really hard for and achieved, I attribute to no pain, no gain. But the experiences that just happened to me, 
either by my hand or someone else's, someone else's, or um, those experiences that I was perhaps born into, I may not have seen the possibility of gain from that, but I'm thankful to know that nothing is wasted. No experience is wasted. So I assert to you today that in life, there are no penalties, just promises to get. And when we realize that, we become unstoppable women. So I'm going to share some leadership qualities that I learned as a child and that stayed with me over time um, and that I use today. And yes, I learned these things over, as a child. I didn't know what they were then, but as I reflected on this opportunity, that they were leadership qualities. Um, so I didn't realize what I was learning at the time, but they have definitely served me well when I didn't know that they would. Uh, and they've shaped my leadership and no doubt, I believe they will shape yours. So the first thing I learned is communication and how to do that. And we've already heard from two speakers about uh, emotional intelligence. And so I learned and used emotional intelligence as, as a child. Now, you may think, oh, no, you didn't. I'm sure you didn't. Well, let me just give you a little background information. I have a picture uh, on my slide here. It's a picture of my sisters. You see, I come from a very large family. There are 15 of us children. And I wasn't the oldest. I, in fact, was one of the babies. I'm baby number 12. And so I didn't have very much influence. And I certainly had no power. And so I had to learn at an early age um, how to get the things I needed or wanted and how to cooperate in a group and how to do all of those things without rocking the boat. So early on, I learned self-awareness. Uh, now, I wasn't great at it, but I did understand early on what, what my position was in the family and how I felt about that. I thought about it on many occasions. Um, and in fact, wanting to have a smaller uh, nuclear family or even being an only child. Uh, but since that wasn't the case, I just had to think about uh, who I was, what position I held and uh, how I felt about that. I then learned um, how to manage myself, how to self-manage uh, regarding my emotions. I couldn't always stump out the room and be upset. That wasn't going to get me anywhere. Um, and I had to understand how to control then, how I responded uh, to things, how I responded to my siblings, uh, who most of the time had charge over me. Um, and I learned at an early age how to stay calm, uh, even in um, crisis situations. Um, I learned social awareness, um, how to um, empathize uh, with my siblings, how to determine who was in charge, who had perceived power and who had actual uh, real power. And I had to learn to make myself available in service, whether I kind of wanted to or not. Um, washing the dishes for someone um, and them in turn finding favor with me. Not that I was trying to gain their favor, but knowing that if I'm being of help, then it in turn came right back to me. Uh, so, uh, and then I learned how to manage relationships. Being one of the, the youngest and not having a lot of influence, I had to uh, learn to be a middleman and help everyone manage conflict. And over time, um, this became a strategy and skill of mine. And guess what? It caused me to gain the respect of my siblings and uh, even to this day. Um, so uh, I did learn those things by being a good listener, by watching body language and tone and learning how to get along with my siblings. Of course, there was love, but we were individuals with uh, different agendas and different desires. And uh, so we had to learn how to get along. And those things I picked up as a child. Uh, I then, as a professional, learned how to leverage my emotional intelligence in my profession uh, as a teacher and as an administrator and in the community group. So uh, communication and actually using emotional intelligence was a huge thing that I learned to do as a child with my siblings. The next quality uh, for my leadership is resilience. 
And the picture here you'll see uh, is that of my mother, uh, Easter Crutchfield. Uh, and she taught me as a young lady, as a young child, how to bounce back better. Um, having so many children, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, and so because we didn't have a lot of money, we had some hardships that we had to deal with. Um, maybe, for instance, um, there wasn't a whole lot of money for purchasing new clothing for everybody. And so fortunately enough, my mother didn't worry about that. Uh, she didn't let that get her down. She was uh, a masterful seamstress and she began to purchase um, fabric and sew clothing for us. Uh, not only that, um, when we didn't have enough food to eat, when we didn't have enough food in the cabinet or the refrigerator, my mother was a master, masterful cook. And so she would just pull up anything in the kitchen and turn it into a feast. And so there was never ever a moment that I witnessed growing up where there was a no, we can't do this. And so I then internalized that and the, the, the uh, phrase, I can't do it, or the word no became foreign to me because I saw on a regular basis just how much a thing could be done, uh, no matter how much life knocked us down. And so not only did my mother bounce back, she bounced back better every single time. And I endeavored to do the same thing. An example would be when I uh, determined to get my doctorate degree from the University of Arkansas, and uh, I came in behind other students in the program. And I was told on several occasions, no, you can't move forward. You haven't taken these classes or you're not ready for these classes. And I asked the professors, give me a chance. If I don't do well, it'll be on me, but let me try it. I just couldn't accept no for an answer. And at the end of my journey, I actually received the Distinguished Doctoral Student of the Year Award uh, for having been an excellent doctoral student and getting the job done. I simply, in my life, and in my career, do not see I can't do it or the word no as an option, thanks to my mother and my upbringing. And so resilience has been um, a mainstay in my leadership skills, my leadership qualities. And so whenever there was a lack of funding, uh, we did fundraisers. Uh, if we had restrictive laws, we found creative ways to implement uh, what needed to be implemented for our students' sake uh, while keeping the integrity uh, of our profession. Um, the next quality that I have in leadership is empathy. Now, as a child, as a young person, you would think that empathy isn't something that a, a young person would actually pick up on. And I, I didn't know that I was using it. I didn't know that um, I was uh, experiencing or exhibiting empathy, uh, but Something happened to me in high school and I can smile about it now, but at the time it was very serious. Uh, I was bullied as a child in high school. It was not fun, uh, but uh, it was a situation, a, a moment in time that I went through. And so I learned um, that there were people in the world who did not mean mean me well, and they could be my age right in school, did not mean me well. Um, I would caveat this by saying I moved out of the neighborhood I had grown up with, and I went to a completely different school with new people, so they didn't know me, and I was an easy target, I suppose. And so with that, I, I wasn't able to fight back well, uh, I, so I lived through it. Uh, but what it showed me is that people have feelings, and the people who were bullying me, quote unquote, um, I wondered what must they be going through? What were they experiencing in their lives that would cause them to want to do these things to me? And so as I grew older, uh, I began to um, think about the other person whenever anything was going on, a conversation, a discussion, and a disagreement. And I would wonder how or what experiences in your life brought you to this moment where you're able to say these things that you're saying or react the way you're reacting. Uh, and I began to um, 
empathize or feel the other person. And so I put, I feel you because uh, with my students and with my personnel, people who work for me, my colleagues and my staff, I'm able then um, to understand what they deal with, what they go through. I try to see things from their perspective, um, regardless of whether I agree with the actions or not, I begin to see them as human and to uh, understand how or why they feel the way they feel. And, um, and, and also with students who go through the same similar uh, situations, how they're able, you know, giving them inspirational words on how they can overcome uh, these things or how they can get past their current situations. And so empathy became um, a, a quality that I learned as a child. Uh, and then grew over time into my leadership uh, quality, one of my leadership qualities. All of these experiences that I've had, play, uh, the qualities that I uh, gained from them for leadership actually apply to each one of my experiences. And so the current slide, you'll see courage. Um, and Sarah Bareilles has a song called, I Want to See You Be Brave, or it's called Brave. And the phrase is, I want to see you be brave. And the moment I heard that song, I resonated with it immediately or it resonated with me. And because so many times when I didn't know or feel like I could, I had to be brave. How many of you, I'll just put this out there. Um, how many of you have been embarrassed before? You've experienced something that caused you embarrassment, whether you did something, said something, uh, that uh, you couldn't take back. Perhaps perhaps um, you said something and it caused you, um, it, it hurt someone or uh, you were loud uh, and others thought you were perhaps obnoxious. And after you thought about it over and over after the fact uh, and you couldn't take it back, it embarrassed you, you felt embarrassed by it. Or perhaps you did something uh, that you wish you hadn't done and that now uh, most of us are very glad that social media wasn't around when we did it uh, in our youth. Uh, but even today, maybe you did something yesterday that you wish you hadn't done. Well, I certainly uh, have mistakes, things that I've done in the past that I wish that I could take back uh, that caused me great embarrassment and that I felt like I couldn't hold my head up um, or I couldn't show up anymore the way that I used to. Uh, but in those moments, uh, with some great reflection and speaking to um, people uh, whom I trust, I learned that we all make mistakes and to show myself some grace. And in those moments, then I learned that I could be brave, that I can show up in spite of that I can apologize and move forward, um, and that I can still choose to speak up, um, not only for myself, but for others. So in face uh, of those mistakes that I've made, um, things that I've said, maybe arguing with a colleague when I shouldn't have, uh, like um, Lori not practicing um, um, those crucial conversations well, um, then, um, I learned, though, to apologize and to be courageous in that and to be brave and um, to take steps to move forward. And so that was something I learned as a, a child, as a young adult, and that I'm continuing to practice and learn today. Oh, and that was a picture of me standing on top of Pinnacle Mountain. One of my sons took that picture, my oldest son. Uh, the last, go uh, the last um, leadership quality that I have and that I learned as a child is goals setting. So I had to learn to set set goals, not uh, because it was given to me or it was taught to me to do that, um, but because of a statement someone made. My neighbor, I had a neighbor and her name was Miss Velma. And I loved Miss Velma. She was like a grandmother uh, to me and my siblings and a friend to my mother. And some of um, our neighborhood and even some members of my family, uh, we experienced um, things that uh, were a part of um, the cycle of poverty, just some of those attributes 
uh, of poverty uh, we experienced in our family and in the community. And so Ms. Velma uh, pulled me aside one day. I was in, I believe, well, I was in what is called middle school now. It was junior high school then. And she said to me, Danielle, you are really smart. And I want to see you graduate without having a child or without, I don't want you to drop out. And so I'm going to make a deal with you. If you can make it to the 12th grade without having a baby or without getting pregnant, I will buy your prom dress. And so I was a kid and, and I didn't know, you know, I had no intentions of going astray or getting pregnant or anything like that. And so I said, okay. Um, and it didn't bother me at the time. And I know she meant well, I know she loved me. And of course I made it to my senior year without having any issues. Um, but Ms. Velma died prior to my prom um, moment. And so she never was able to buy me that prom dress. But her challenge to me or her, her um, suggestion to me that she would do it if I made it to my senior year stayed with me. And I used her, um, I used her challenge to me uh, to propel me forward in everything that I did. So in college, I, I got a full ride scholarship and I used, I literally thought about what Ms. Velma said and um and participated in everything that I could because I determined that people see me, they see my family, they see my neighborhood a certain way. Whether they mean good or bad by it, they saw us a certain way, whether we were those things or not. And so for me, success was always around the corner. There was no challenge that I wasn't up for. Again, I told you in a previous slide, the word no and can't do it were not in my vocabulary. And so I wrote an essay about the prom dress that I never received and the implications behind her suggestion of purchasing that dress for me. And it continued to live with me, even to this day, when there, when there are, um, when there are um, opportunities uh, in front of me, even this opportunity to speak to you today about my leadership qualities, um, I thought about Ms. Velma. And I thought about the fact that she wanted me to be successful and she used whatever incentive she could for me to be that. But while she had that incentive for me, um, I knew she loved me, but it also meant something else. It meant for me how people might see me. And so I was determined to show up every single time in my best form, uh, setting a goal to ensure that I was successful. So the leadership qualities that make me unstoppable are those that you see on the screen. I learned to communicate early and I continue to do so, right? I am resilient and I try to continue to be. I show empathy, uh, I show courage and I set goals and uh, endeavor to uh, achieve those. I firmly believe that we are exactly what we believe we are. We're exactly who we believe we are. So why not be unstoppable? Why not? Everything works together for my good, for your good. Nothing is wasted, the good nor the bad. Nothing is wasted. Yes, no pain, no gain, but everything works together for my good. And so, I've determined that every experience that I have, every experience that you have, uh, whether it's embarrassing, whether it pushed me to be better, whether I've worked hard for it or whether it was inflicted upon me, it made me uniquely me, a mother, a sister, a leader. I've decided to go ahead and be her. And I encourage you to go ahead and be you. Go ahead and be the mother, be the sister, be the wife, be the friend, be you, but be unstoppable because 
There are no penalties, just promises to get. Thank you. Hey, my friend, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and share your biggest takeaway. And if you're wanting more, you can access hundreds of recent speakers, book summaries, great articles, and more at no additional charge through your membership portal. You can also get involved in a Women Leaders Association Mastermind group or networking group near you. Or if you just need to access your membership portal, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com to be connected. Because here at Women Leaders Association, we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. That's all for today, my friends. Bye for now.